Australia prides itself on being a place where everyone has an equal chance. A multicultural nation built on waves of immigration. But now a wave of right-wing anti-Islamic sentiment is challenging that identity. What motivates those who seek to divide a nation? And how do those who are targeted fight back? I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of 101 East, we investigate both sides of Australia's cultural divide. Australia, the fear of ISIS inspired violence has created a growing intolerance towards the nation's Muslim community. Years of political rhetoric exploiting community fears about Muslims has left many Australians with a deep distrust of Islam. The tentacles of the death cult have extended even here. Daesh is coming, if it can for every person with a simple message, submit or die. Following a series of lone wolf attacks on home soil and the recent violence in Paris, the fear is intensified and some people are taking to the streets in protest. Since Paris, it's even more important that we try and get Australia safe from Islam, a disease that is spreading across the world and trying to take over everything. A wave of ultra-nationalist groups have emerged with names like Australian Defence League, Reclaim Australia and the United Patriots Front, sharing their hatred and fear of Islam in a series of confrontational rallies. The leaders portray themselves as patriots, intent on saving the Australian way of life and defending the country from what they say is an Islamic cultural invasion. They come here and rape our women and say they deserved it for not being covered up. Are you kidding me? I am sick to death of everyone calling us goddamn racists and Nazis. You want to know what a real Aussie thinks? The people have risen up. We may end up in a civil war. Despite Australian Muslims making up just 2% of the population and wielding little political power, Many in their community are being subjected to hate, suspicion and fear on a daily basis. We stand for freedom, ban the Quran. Stop the Islamization of Australia. We stand for freedom, ban the burqa. They're trying to take over Australia. We stand for freedom, ban halal, Islamic schools, mosques. In the Sydney suburb of Lakemba, a group of women are fighting back with a series of tongue-in-cheek YouTube videos. And action. Don't you have a pedophile prophet to be worshipping? Some children to be grooming? Or some young girls to plan on raping with your Muslim mates? Society needs Muzraps. Without them, there wouldn't be enough terrorist putrid scum to justify armies. And cut. Yeah, Muzraps is, is, is one word that I'm struggling with. Uh, a Muslim rat? I don't know. <laughs> we've decided to pull together Facebook comments and tweets that we've personally received and we've pulled in people who have also received these sort of vitriolic comments, put them into a video together and really get people to see what Muslims are experiencing. You are not an Australian. You are not welcome in our country. You support ISIS. Randa Abdel Fattah is an author best known for her novels which explore the experience of growing up as a Muslim in Australia. They're getting more creative. Yeah. She's concerned that her children are facing a future where violent and racist vitriol towards Muslims is becoming commonplace. Go home, you are an evil, racist woman. May I don't have time to be evil, racist and a woman. I've got three jobs, I've got three kids. Being evil is not on my agenda at the moment. Perfect. Do you feel better after this? <laughs> Actually, I do. It 
there is an element of empowerment when you're taking those negative words and you're throwing them back. Humour is the answer to everything. Yeah. Definitely feel a lot better and a lot lighter just getting it off my chest. It's therapeutic because when you hear this and read this day in, day out, it can really get you down. So true. It's your evil views are hate-filled and racist. I'm the racist. <laughs> a lot of people tell Muslims you're just playing the victim and they actually don't realise the impact of these words. This is everyday language and everyday racism that Muslims are experiencing. Assimilate, be damned. <laughs> Why don't we <laughs> When you are forming a circle around an entire community and saying you are all the same, you are a homogenous block of terrorists, of scum, this is racism and we are going to advocate this as racism. Assimilate, be damned. We don't want you here at all. Full stop. Australia has been built on waves of immigration, often welcoming refugees from war-torn lands. It's a source of pride for a nation that calls itself the lucky country. But even some who've made the journey here are now questioning the great multicultural experiment. In Melbourne's eastern suburbs, a church service is being held by the leader of Rise Up Australia, a political group that combines evangelical Christianity with blatant anti-Islamic policies. Based at the Catch the Fire Ministries, this controversial political party is led by Sri Lankan-born Daniel Nalaya, a Christian pastor who denounces mosques as Satan's stronghold. We're just going to pray for the Christians who are being persecuted right now in the Middle East. It's very close to falling into the hands of ISIS. Every Christian they find, they're going to crucify them or behead them. I believe we are in World War III. We have seen Islam spread its wings all through the Middle East to absolutely slaughter people. If what they're saying, Islam is a peaceful religion, then Islamic leaders should be speaking out from the rooftop saying, if you die in jihad, you're going to burn in hellfire. There has to be Muslims rising up and protesting against Islam. Jesus came and he died for us. But unfortunately, Muhammad did not die for his people. He wants the people to die for their religion. Okay, I just want to do something right now. I want Pastor John representing Malaysia to come and stand here. Tran representing Vietnam. Brother Cedric representing India. Can you come out? Many of Daniel Nalaya's followers have migrated to Australia. China, Hungary. Can we have an Aussie, please? <laughs> Daniel's Rise Up Australia party wants new migrants who come here to abandon their own culture and embrace core Australian values. Values that Daniel says are built on Christianity. 28 different nationalities and we all call Australia home. Let us all lift our hands up. Lord Jesus, we bring your word. So we see Islam as a great danger because Islam culture is culture, religion and law. Four wives is part of their culture. Female genital mutilation is a part of their culture. Sharia law is a part of their culture. And if you're saying bring multiculturalism, you're saying, okay, bring all those cultures in here. And we're saying, no, sorry, we can't have that there. We will not be intimidated. You're not going to change our way of life. So, Father, we pray to you that we will take this nation for Jesus and the nations. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's an important day for Daniel. The Rise Up Australia party is participating in a mass demonstration against the construction of a new mosque. I lived in Saudi Arabia and I found out as to what the Quran teaches. There are some pretty violent scriptures in the Quran which tells the followers to kill those who are not Muslims, which is very detrimental. The protest is taking place in Bendigo, a small town in southeast Australia. The government is struggling right now to monitor the number of mosques which are in Australia. You don't need to monitor a church, you don't need to monitor a temple, you don't need to monitor a synagogue because you know there is no violence coming out of those places. But a mosque has to be monitored because the mosque promotes violence. Bendigo is a quiet country town with a rich history. Born in the gold rush of the 1850s, it's an unlikely flashpoint for the division, mistrust and paranoia currently surrounding Islam in Australia. The town council has given the go-ahead for the construction of a new mosque, 
and now the streets have become a battleground between those supporting the right to religious freedom and a clutch of newly formed ultra-nationalist groups who've been rallied here today by Blair Cottrell, the leader of the United Patriots Front. Now, before I say anything else, I'd first like to congratulate you all on being such proud patriots. The Australian spirit isn't something that we can hold. It's something that lives in our hearts like an abstract thing, and we need to feel it or else it no longer exists. Do you feel it inside your hearts now? Yeah. It's very encouraging to see this many people already here. The government needs to take note. It clearly sends a message of people's power. And I'm very proud that I can stand with the people of Bendigo and of all of Australia. Yeah, we're going to be speaking. Everybody in here, I need this gazebo cleared, please. The Antimos rally is an awkward partnership between Daniel Nalaya's Rise Up Australia party and the right-wing anti-Islamic group, the United Patriots Front. Represented today by Cottrell, its predominantly Caucasian membership is growing fast. rise without fear! Thanks largely to an embrace of social media, sharing videos that range from angry calls to arms. Our boys will riot the house down. To a mock beheading on the doorstep of the Bendigo City Council. He's often been called a born leader. Please put your hands together. Blair Cottrell. I really appreciate you all coming here. It's fantastic to see that the Australian spirit still lives. This here, now, is what creates communities and nations. Togetherness, pride, love, the willingness to sacrifice not just some of your own time, but if necessary, your own life for the future of your people. Cottrell is a controversial campaigner who appears inspired by German nationalism. And so now is the beginning of the strengthening of our people. Posting on social media, he's called for Hitler's portrait to be hung in every Australian classroom. The only way to stop us now is to kill us, and good luck. If you're an Australian patriot, please put your hands together, Dr. Daniel Nalaya. This rally has been called by the media a white right-wing supremacist racist rally. But I am a black fellow. This rally is not about racism. This is about Australia. All people who come into this country, if you think where you have come from is better than Australia, I have one message for you. Shut up, pack up, and get out. Australians are Danny Nyalia was excellent, extremely eloquent, well-dressed and a man to be admired. He's a true Aussie icon. The Muslims, right in my way, I'd kick them out of the country. I'm not racist in a lot of ways, but sometimes you've got to be racist to some people like that. You know what? One day when I see my grandchildren, if they could tell me, Papa, you're a champion, I'll be happy. Good on you, mate. You make me proud to be Australian. You need a hand to get home or you're right? I'm right, thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you. While some might describe these hardline groups as being on the fringe, with a federal election looming in 2016, there are other campaigns with clear ambitions to enter the political mainstream. In Western Australia, the state's capital city, Perth, is hosting the launch of a controversial new political party called the Australian Liberty Alliance. There's an unmistakable tension at the party's inaugural press conference. The media are surrounded by police and an imposing team of private security. They're here to control the protesters and protect the anti-Islamic Dutch politician, Geert Wilders who's flying from Holland to give his support. Good morning, everyone. My name's Debbie Robertson. I'm president of the newly formed and launched Australian Liberty Alliance. And I would just like to say, democracy has 
prevailed. I'm very proud to be standing for the Australian Liberty Alliance. And even though we've got the chanting, rent a crowd over here, Australians must never be forced to accept that violent extremism is part of our society. The ALA's candidate for Queensland is Bernard Gaynor, an ex-army major who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. When you have a community that has more of its sons fighting for the Islamic State than in the Australian Defence Force, we have a serious problem in this nation. Big and son are welcome here. The Australian Liberty Alliance is modelled on Holland's Party for Freedom, led by Geert Wilders, who labelled Islam as retarded. Despite regularly leading the opinion polls in Holland, his hardline policies are so divisive he's forced to live under 24-hour police protection. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to announce Mr. Gilt Wilders is here. He's one of the bravest men on this planet. He tells a spade a spade and speaks the truth. Free speech, not hate. Well, historical day, and I was very proud to be present here in Australia with the launch of the Australia Liberty Alliance, a new political party that is founded to fight for freedom, freedom of speech and against the Islamization is, I believe, the best thing that could have happened to Australia. And I know it will be hard. We don't have Sharia law. We should never have Sharia law. Sharia law is totally opposite to freedom when it comes to how you treat freedom of speech, how you treat women, how you treat non-Muslims, Christians, gays, journalists. The idea that all cultures are equal. Well, they are not. People are equal, but cultures are not equal. Say it loud, say it clear. Like Wilders, the ALA described Islam as a totalitarian ideology with global aspirations. The policies include banning the burqa and imposing a 10-year suspension on Muslim migration to Australia. We don't have a problem with freedom of religion. We have a problem when there's an imposition of one religion over and above others. Say it loud! Say it clear! I'm so sorry, I can't hear I cannot hear a thing. Say it clear! Racism is not welcome here! Weapons are coming from mosques and people are dying. Respect has to start with respect for our culture. We are not an Islamic country. The ALA may view mosques as a hotbed of violence, but on the other side of the country, Sydney's Muslim community are attempting to build bridges by inviting everyday Australians into their place of worship. Welcome to the mosque open day. How you going? Well, today is a national day of unity, where basically the doors have been flung open for the community to come in. It's about engagement, it's about seeking, and it's about providing an avenue where we can get to know one another. Can you explain what your headdress is, what it's called and what it means? We can imitate the Prophet Muhammad in his dress. It's like, for example, if a particular individual in the world wears a particular jacket, let's say like a superstar or singer, whatever the case may be, the next day it's sold out. Before long, the conversation turns to questions about violence and the use of the Islamic religion by some to justify atrocities, like the recent Paris attacks claimed by ISIS. I think it's savage the way that we have turned against each other and turned upon one another. Violence knows no ethnicity, knows no allegiance other than to its own ends, which is bloody. Go back historically and you see that religion has always been hijacked by certain individuals. So certain people will lay claim to a particular faith and they'll say this belongs to my faith, but in reality they've misquoted, they've taken something out of context. And I don't think that's new to faith. There's a lot of misunderstandings that need to be cleared up. I wish there were more people here so that they could have the same experience that I had had. There are extremists on both sides who see that it's in their interests to stir up feelings of hate, revenge. As a whole society, we need to fight against that and days like this can only help. My husband and I were interested to come and see the Lakemba Mosque. The welcome was very warm. The thing that you always learn when you do things like this is how regular everyone is, how very Australian everyone is, the humour is the same. It's a great initiative. I don't believe Australia is a racist country. I believe Australia is a country that needs more clarity. And I think sometimes when you do have strong rhetoric towards Islam, I think ultimately that does resonate from a misunderstanding. 
For me, it was a learning curve because I got to see how basic some people's understanding is of Islam. And I take that responsibility, being born here and brought up here in Australia, that we haven't been able to communicate uh, some core basic tenets and beliefs of Islam. People have said that multiculturalism has failed. And I think that the opposite is true. I think it has survived and it's thriving. And unfortunately, that conversation now is being overrun by a few people who are quite loud. You are violent and we need As the open mosque day society. draws to a close, one visitor who calls himself Farmer John is still concerned that Muslims might force him to change his way of life. I'm an atheist. I'm not going to fight with people about what they believe not to eat and what not to consume. But if anyone tries to force me to stop drinking alcohol, that's when I will rise up with my brother in Australia and say, enough's enough. We appreciate our alcohol. We're not going to change that. We are going to cohabitate this country or something's going to give. Well, basically, this is a drawing of your typical backyard bigot. Obviously, this man's very angry. He doesn't know what's happening to this country. He doesn't know why the Muslims are taking over. Just to break the stereotype of the Muslim man whose women are so oppressed. My name's Safter Ahmed, and I'm an academic in the field of Islamic studies, and I'm also an artist, mostly in the areas of comic books. Safdar feels the political discourse surrounding Muslims in Australia has reached toxic levels, forcing them to respond to absurd accusations about their religion. Racism isn't logical, it isn't reasonable, so often a well-reasoned response doesn't work. And so I think a creative, imaginative response is also an interesting way of undermining and subverting the discourse of racism. This is one of my characters, her name's Huda. Here she is talking about bigotry and how you deal with it. So here's the hostile commenter threatening her online. She imagines beating up that person, but then she realises that violence doesn't work. Here she is explaining that violence is like an open wound that feeds on irrational fear and prejudice, and it doesn't actually serve anyone. Safdar's art attempts to make sense of the battle between Islamic hardliners on one side and Australian reactionaries on the other. This is a scene depicting the Reclaim Australia rallies. Here you have a few of the leading figures of that movement from following many of these right-wing groups. You just can't help but be struck how absurd it all is. And of course, being a cartoonist, absurdity is something that we thrive on. This idea that Muslims represent a threat to the nation state is up there with the worst type of anti-Semitism that existed in Europe in the first half of the 20th century. And I think Islamophobia today is racist in a very similar way. In response to the climate of fear and the increasing hatred shown towards Muslims in Australia, some residents in Sydney are gathering to show solidarity with the Islamic community in a rally to celebrate Australia's cultural diversity. I'm here because I think Australia's been saying too many them and us is raising all these paranoid fears about people who are different. I don't even like to think about things like Australian values. I like to think about human values. Today is the annual Walk Together organised by Welcome to Australia. The intention is to cultivate a culture of welcome. People from all walks of life have gathered here today to celebrate the richness of diversity and the beauty that that brings to our community. <laughs> I love you guys. You were here last year, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, yes, fantastic. Yes. I love it. Um, we're both from Australian Muslim, Australian Muslim Youth. Youth. Um, we've an organisation we've just started. Yeah just to show the real meaning of Islam and show the wider community that we're not these extremists that everyone makes out to be. We are born and raised here. Just because we put the scarf on doesn't mean we're not Australian. We're at a point where we know that there are people out there, young and old, who feel completely disenfranchised. And despite being born and bred in Australia, they feel completely disconnected with the rest of the country. So something like this is very much reaching out to everybody, irrespective of their background and just affirming that love will always triumph hate. We have bigots out there and racists that try to steal this flag away from us. It represents everyone. 
and we truly support that this country is a multicultural country. It is a country of rights, freedoms, and people are out here trying to take it away from us. This flag represents freedom for us. Despite the optimism unleashed by today's rally, the great divide between the country's Muslim and non-Muslim communities is in danger of undermining Australia's multicultural identity. Raising the question, what does being an Australian really mean today?